section. Welcome back to experiment six. So now we're going to be doing part B. In part B of the experiment, we're gonna be looking at the different reactivity of our halogens. So we're gonna be looking specifically at chlorine, bromine, and iodine. But to be able to determine the reactivity of the halogens, we're going to have to do a type of reaction to be able to determine which one's more or less reactive. And these types of reactions are called single displacement reactions, which you will be learning about in another couple of weeks. Okay? But for us, we're just using it as a way to determine what is more or less reactive. So one of the properties of halogens is they have um, unique colors to them. So in the first part of our experiment, what we're going to be doing is these are, um, we have chlorine water, bromine water, and iodine water, which means we have our halogens mixed with water. So one of the properties of halogens is they also are soluble in mineral oil. So in the first part of the experiment, we're going to be adding mineral yeah mineral oil to each of our test tubes and then we're going to add correspondingly the chlorine, bromine, and iodine water so we can see what characteristic color that it turns and where we can find that color. So let me add our mineral oil to our test tubes. So we're adding about one milliliter of mineral oil. So now we have mineral oil. So now what we're going to do to this first test tube is we're going to add about one milliliter of the chlorine water. There we go. And now to the second test tube, I'm going to add about one milliliter of the bromine water. And then to the last test tube, we're going to add one milliliter of the iodine water. And now to each test tube, the procedure tells us to shake it vigorously with test tubes. Okay, so we're shaking the chlorine water. Shaking our bromine. And the last one, we're shaking the iodine. Okay. So now, what we're going to look at is one of the properties of halogens is that it's more soluble in the mineral oil layer, which is the top layer, than it is the water layer, which is the bottom layer. And so what we want to do is we want to look at when this separates out the two different layers that are being formed and look at the characteristic color that it turns in. So in our first one, we can start to see those two layers being formed. So our top layer is the chlorine in the oil, okay? So its color is kind of a clearish, yellowish kind of color, okay? So our bromine, notice the top layer ha is very orange, okay? So what's happened is the bromine is being extracted away from the aqueous layer and getting pulled up into that oil layer, okay? And then our last one, the iodine, okay? Notice you're starting to see this kind of purple color in this top layer. This is the characteristic color that we're going to see for our iodine. So we haven't done a reaction in this. What we're just testing in this part of the experiment is we're looking for that color that we would find the different halogens to be when it's in the presence of mineral oil. So we have chlorine, kind of that very light clearish yellow. We have bromine, which is orange. And we have the iodine, which is kind of a purple color. Okay, so now, what we're going to do is we're now going to actually be adding this to another compound to see for the reaction. To be able to determine whether or not a reaction has occurred is we want to look at the characteristic oil layer and see what color did it change. Okay? 
So if it started out with the element of bromine and the top layer is still bromine, that would mean there is no chemical reaction. But if I started with, for example, bromine and it switches to chlorine, or not chlorine, iodine, <laughs> then there would be a chemical reaction. But let's test and see. So we're gonna do our next set, okay? So if we follow our procedure, what it tells us to do is add one milliliter of mineral oil. to each test tube. Okay, now to the first test tube, we're going to add a solution of potassium chloride, okay, KCl. So we're gonna add about one milliliter. Okay. And then to the next one, we wanna add potassium iodine. about one milliliter. So then, our procedure tells us to shake these. So we'll take our potassium chloride, we'll give it a nice shake, and we're gonna take our potassium iodine and just give it a nice shake. Notice, they are both have two layers, but they're both clear. The reason why is we haven't added the halogens yet. Remember, it's the halogens when they're in their elemental form that have that characteristic color. So now, to each one of these test tubes, we're going to add our bromine water. Oops, bromine water, got the wrong one. Okay, so we add one, want to add one mil to each. We'll give that a nice shake. Okay, so now we're going to add one mil of bromine water to the other test tube. We'll give that a nice shake. Now what we want to do is we want to see that top layer, what color did it change? So in this first test tube, we had potassium chloride and it's being mixed with the bromine. Okay? Now when we look at our two layers that are being formed, notice this top layer is orange. I don't want to give away the answer, but let's think about what halogen at the beginning had that top layer be orange to think about which one is in that top layer. Now, when we look at our second one, we can see our top layer, which is a little bit harder to see just because of the dark color, but what color is it characteristic to? Okay? And also think about what did we add. Okay? So now, we'll do our next two. So in our next two, we're going to start again with the mineral oil. We want to add one milliliter and one milliliter. And then to our first test tube, we're going to add potassium bromide. And to our next one, we're going to add potassium iodide. So we'll use our test tube, give them a nice shake. All right. Now to these two test tubes, we're going to be adding the chlorine water. Okay. Give it a nice shake. And then to our next one, we're going to add the clearing water. And we'll give it a nice shake. 
All right, so now let's think about what just happened. We added chlorine water, which remember, chlorine water is pretty much kind of a very clear color, okay? Now, if we look at the top layers of our two test tubes, we wanna see, did it change, right? We started out with chlorine, which is very clear, and now notice my top layer, okay? We can start to see it kind of turning more of an orange color. And then when we look at our other test tube, notice our top layer is having that very nice purple color. And if we go back to our previous one, notice we now have good separation of our layers. Notice we really can see that purple color and the orange color from before. Now we have only two more to do. Okay. And so for our last two, we're going to add our mineral oil. And to the first test tube, we want to add potassium chloride. And to our next test tube, we're going to add the potassium bromide. Now we're going to give these a good shake to mix them together. Do they get fries with the shake? <laughs> if only. <coughs> Doing double hand and mixing here. Okay. Now to these two test tubes, we're going to be adding now iodine water. So notice we've tested every single halogen now. We're doing our last one, which is the iodine. So we're going to add iodine to our first test tube, give it a nice shake. <coughs> and we'll add iodine to our last test tube. <coughs> and give it a nice shake. Okay, so let's give it that a minute to see the two layers <coughs> separate out and see what the color of that top layer is. You can see that it's slowly starting to separate. And if you look at the very top, you can start to see that purple color being formed in both of the test tubes. <coughs> so the longer we wait, the more we will be able to see that separation, but you can start to see that that top layer is forming a purple color, okay? So now let's summarize what we've done, okay? Our first three test tubes these were just looking at the colors of the halogens in the presence of our mineral oil. So chlorine is clear, bromine is the orange, and our iodine is kind of that purplish color. Now the remainder of the test tubes was looking at our actual reactions. So when you're actually doing your procedure and you're recording your data, you want to look at what color this top layer formed. The top layer is indicating the less reactive species. Okay? So this color is orange. So what would be that less reactive species? This one is purple. Okay, so those were the first two. This is when we added together potassium chloride with the bromine. And this one is potassium iodine with the bromine. Okay, our next two test tubes, again, we want to look at that top layer. Okay, to both of these test tubes, we added chlorine. The first one was chlorine with potassium bromide, and the second one was chlorine with potassium iodine. So again, we want to look at that top layer. So we see an orange color, and we see the purple color. And then our last two, we have potassium chloride plus iodine, and the next one we have potassium bromide plus iodine. And you can start to see that the layers are separating out even better, but notice the color of the top layer is kind of a purple color. So.
That is the procedure for part B of experiment six. Thank you.